It's incredible the opportunity I have to talk to you about Wayne Alderson. I don't know how many of you know about him, um, but he is truly one of the pioneers. And I think these pioneer uh, reflections are important for us to remind ourselves that we are not doing this, that others have gone before and we can build on what they have done. I first met Wayne in probably the early 1980s. Uh, I was driving down the road on my way to Boeing. I was working at the Boeing company, and I heard this man interviewed on the radio. I'd never heard anything quite like this before. He was a steel company vice president, and he was talking about how he connected his faith and his work. I was totally captivated by his story. So much so that that evening on the way home, I stopped at the Christian bookstore and bought a book on his life. And my wife was very gracious to me. And after dinner, all the other stuff to do, I sat down and I read the book all the way through. The next morning, I called him up and became his friend. And we had a friendship that went from probably 1981 till he died in 2013. Let me tell you a little bit about his life. There are three segments that I want to highlight, but I'll mention something in between. In 1945, he was in World War II. He called himself the man with a hole in his head. He, you can see the indentation in his head up there. He took a bullet uh, because he was a point man. He went out ahead to pave the way for the troops. And that was his life. The rest of his life was a point man. Between 45 and 65, there were several really interesting things that happened, and in a strange order. First of all, he met his wife, Nancy, and they married. He went to college. He became an elder in the church, and then he became a Christian, and it was in that order. <laughs> there were some wonderful stories about being in the church as an elder before he became a Christian, but I don't have time for that. So while he was at Pitron Steel, from 65 to 75, he took a leadership role in trying to think about how to care about the workers in the workplace. He had this idea that the people who were in labor were not the enemy, but they were the ones that did the work for the company. After he was fired in 1975, and I'll tell you that as well in just a moment, he founded an organization called Value of the Person where he went out and started doing seminars to teach people about the value of a person. Where did all this come from? Well, one of the things that he told me was that when he was a very young child, he heard his father talking to his mother, and his father was a coal miner in very ugly conditions. And he came home one day and he said to his wife, Edie, Edie, why don't they value us as much as they value the mule? And what he was saying was, wow, this is the way we're treated. And Wayne said, even as a young boy, he said, if I ever get in a position of organizational management, that will be my role, is to look out for and value the worker. He took on a life verse. And this life verse had a double meaning, and both meanings were very powerful him, for him. The first was, I have been reconciled to God through Christ. And that became his life in Christ. The second one was, and God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. If you ever got a book autographed by Wayne, he would write this verse into the, into the book. He would talk about it everywhere because he felt that God had called him to be a reconciling force in the world. There were two books that would describe more of his life. The one on the right, written by R.C. Sproul, his only biography, was the story of Wayne Alderson called Stronger Than Steel. That was the book that I bought that night and read all the way through. The second one is Theory R Management, where he and his daughter Nancy, who worked with him in the value of the person ministry, together laid out the foundation for how they thought about people in the workplace. R.C. Sproul made this comment about him, one of the most courageous human beings I've ever encountered. He also referred to him as the coal miner in the $300 suit. He was an enigma of, in many ways, and I can describe that to you in a bit. Uh, when I published an interview with Wayne, uh, I got this comment from a person I don't know, but it seemed to sum up what I knew about Wayne Alderson. Surely he was a great leader. May God help us to walk like he did and value people. That was what characterized Wayne Alderson, and that 
actually changed my life. Starting from the time I heard that interview, I started looking at my work differently. I'd never heard about this work and faith connection in quite the way that I learned it from Wayne Alderson. In order to help you get an understanding of Wayne Alderson, I'd like to share a little segment of a movie, and we're going to play that for you now. Pitron, a steel foundry, a strange mixture of old world craftsmanship and coal mine working conditions. For Pitron's employees, a place of labor unrest and racial hatred. For management, a place of breaking promises and a three-year loss of six million dollars. Pitron, a steel foundry, about to close. What I remember about the strike, I remember 84 days of hail, 84 days of uncertainty. Outside the gate, in the cold weather, it was snow and rainy. And they had their fires built. And if you ever see a picket line, there's always a drum, and it's red hot, and there's holes in the bottom, and smoke coming out of the top. And you see the men standing around it and building a shed around it. And I thought about their families and you know, what they were going through, what we as a company were going through. It was so unnecessary and so useless. And yet, I also understood that they were not wrong, that they were right. If I were a union man under those conditions, I would have closed the plant down, I would have struck. Wayne Alderson was controller of Pitron. In what might have been the last weeks of the company's existence, he was made vice president in charge of operations, one of only two in management remaining. Knowing the truth about Pitron's financial condition, he met unofficially with a union committee headed by Sam Piccolo, president of United Steelworkers Local 1306. Yet, on January 20, 1973, the men of Pitron returned to work to judge the new management on what it called Operation Turnaround. The first time I seen Brother Olson, he came down through the shop when I was working afternoon shift, and someone said, there's the new manager here. I have him look around, he holds his hand up at me. That surprised me, because uh, most of the our personnel, they never speak to you. I got a hold of Wayne, I said, well, you know, uh, you're gonna keep this Bible class, you better get a bigger place. Took him down an old storage room under the open hearth. When he seen the dirtiness and the uh, columns of concrete, you know, he said, this is it. This is the place we'll have it. Wayne Alderson worked hard for his men, spending 14 hours a day at Pitron, many of those hours in the plant, and often saw all three shifts in one day. Most of your corporation presidents, chief executive officers, managers, right down the line to foremen, they're all in key positions that could change the world. Why don't they? So they say, well, you can't mix religion, you can't mix Christianity with work. You gotta segregate the two. And I say, why? Why do you have to segregate the two? You don't have to compromise. Hi, how you doing? You know, who says you have to compromise? You say, you can't do it in church once a week. You can't do it in social functions in the communities once a week or once a month. It's where you live, and you live at work most of your life. Hi, how are you? And take from the place of employment something. That's what will make the difference in the world. Wayne was an amazing man. He told me the first time he went out to uh, shake hands with people and thank them for a good day's work, they didn't know what to do. Some of them looked at their feet. They couldn't believe this was happening, but slowly, they built up a place to the, to the point where they were very profitable. And when they were profitable, the company was sold. And when it was sold, the new management said, we don't want this kind of interaction with labor. You have to change your ways or you're out. And he said, I'm out. That was the end, and he started this uh, work on value of the person that gave seminars across the country, helping people understand labor management relationships. A man who changed many, many workplaces and changed many people, and I was one of those people.